Ladies and gentlemen, my name is HG Udall. This is a 2002 Toyota Sequoia SR5. This is my front yard, and this is an HG Udall in-depth review. Let's go. So, without any further hesitation, let's go ahead, start her up, let her run. Blue exterior, gray leather interior. Not sure the exact name of this car, of the color combo, but then again, this car is 16 years old, so what do you expect? And also do excuse the mess. This is a family vehicle and I tried to clean it out as best as I could. But then again, 16 years of constant love and abuse and now we're at this stage. Anyway. You're here and there. Let's try this tried and true 5.7 liter I Force V8 engine. Love this thing. Very nice. It's running our interior tour of the Sequoia. Kind of this interesting softish, rubbery plastic kind of. I don't know exactly how to describe this main material. On the same goes for like the main grab handle, kind of this upper portion here dark gray. Got this kind of interesting almost carpet-like cloth material in the center bit here. Got our pl cheap plastic Toyota door handles from the time. These are prone to break. We've gone through so many in the like our on the back doors they've cracked a couple of times. Cracked even broken completely off. Anyway moving down we've got our power locks, window lock, Front two windows are fully automatic, and then you got power rear windows as well. UBL audio system, UBL, JBL audio system. Nice door pocket. Again, more of that got kind of a nice little carpeted portion here, and then a little illuminated light. Very nice. It does say Sequoia down here. Just actually noticed this, and again, we've had this car for over 10 years, so <laughs> never noticed that. Anyway, come into our seats. As you would expect with a 16 year old vehicle, the leather is showing a lot of signs of wear. But then again, like I said, it's a 16 year old car. As for the bolsters, very nice, very comfortable leather seats, very much. Moving down, we do have full power adjustability. We have our tiltability. You just raise it up and down. You got your forward backward motion, you got your backrest, it's got a two-way adjustable lumbar. Very nice. As well as a fully adjustable headrest. Stepping inside, we do have a nice grab handle located on both of the A-pillars, which is really really helpful for getting into these taller vehicles. Moving over to the left hand side, we do have one air vent. Nice. Okay, our open and close lever here. We've got this switch, which is a power window control switch for the rear glass in the on the back of the lift gate. You can lower that independently. Kind of a cool thing. The Sequoias and the Forerunners all still offer that to this day. We've got our gauge brightness switch. This is another switch that I'm not exactly sure what it does but it's an available option on Limited. This is just being a base SR5. It doesn't have all this stuff on it right now. We do have our tilt telescope, our tiltable steering wheel lever. It's all, all the adjustment you get. Turn signal stock, what do you expect? Um. Yeah. <clears throat> As you would expect for 
this vehicle being 2002, 16 years old, there's not really anything going on crazy on the steering wheel. Just, I mean, you don't even get a full color emblem. You just get the Toyota logo embossed into this into the airbag cover, which is really crazy. And then you got these little dot things. You did get a full color uh, chrome Toyota logo, bigger one in the facelift of this generation Sequoia, which came out in 2005, I believe. I think. Got your cruise control settings down here. You can adjust it on off. Cancel. Kind of an interesting little idea to do that there. And then your wiper stock located here. Power, uh, you've got your transmission lever with overdrive, automatic column shifter. Coming to our gauge cluster, nothing fancy as well. What do you expect? Engine temperature, oil, different things like traction control, VAS, VSC, traction control off. You got your tachometer, you got your Wiper fluid light, seatbelt light, check engine light, airbag light, ABS light, etc. etc. Got your emergency brake light, you got your door is open light, which is indicating that my door is open. You got the key flash light, which is the security kind of letting you know that the key is somewhere, but well, it's letting you know the vehicle is unlocked, but it's not been started, I think. And up above, you do have your bright indicator in the center here. So your high beam indicator here, as well as your turn signal indicators, speedometer, both in miles per hour and kilometers per hour, because again, this is a Japanese vehicle, so what do you expect? Odometer is printed out in this dis display screen here. You've got our gear, our gear indicators, park, reverse, neutral, drive, gear two, as well as low. However, our, ge our drive gear does not show a light but most Sequoias will. It, the light just went out, and it, there's no real need to fix it because it's the transmission still works fine. Battery voltage, as well as our fuel, and then our fuel door arrow pointing to the driver's side, letting us know where the fuel door is located. You can toggle this switch to change the display in the odometer. You can look at some other functions, not too much else, though. traditional ignition cylinder, however this one is illuminated, so if this was at night you go ahead and start your car, your ignition cylinder is illuminated. You do get other warning lights coming along the sides here as well. Now the odometer on this example is showing 132,660 miles. Very nice. Now one thing Toyota's done and still does with their traditional ignition cylinders is in order to get the key out for, in order to turn it all the way off you have to push in and twist out kind of a little safety measure moving along got another pair of, of air vents on both sides of our radio headlight head unit nothing fancy here again 16 year old vehicle just your basic six disc CD CD changer, however, it does even still feature a standard tape deck, which is crazy seeing that tape, that cassette tapes were even going out of style even back in 2002 when this car was new, so having a tape deck in this thing is a bit random. But then again, I think this is a, this wasn't, 2002 wasn't the first model year for this design Sequoia, so it probably came out in like the late 90s or the year 2000, so tape decks were slowly fading out over the course of this production. Now it's kind of an interesting design here. You've got a bunch of buttons. you got your power volume knob, tune knob here. You can kind of push to adjust the audio modes. You have CD, AM, FM, as well as tape to select kind of where, where your audio is coming out of. Scan, you have your track, you can seek and then you can go track forward backward here depending on whether or not you're on CD or radio. You have your di six different presets, whether it be the six different discs or your six different radio presets. You have your Dolby Sound as well as your uh, tape eject, CD eject, as well as CD load. You have to press load, wait for the green lights, and then insert your disc. Moving down, we do have our rear climate control toggle switch, our hazard switch. 
We have our, our temperature control knob, our fan speed control knob. This display screen displays our current air temp as well as the different as well as the zone the air is coming out of. We have our mode button, auto, off, AC, front and rear. I believe that can, just uh, syncs them both. The passenger seatbelt indicator is located here. Front and rear defrost as well as recycling. Our traction control off button as well as the hour and minute buttons to adjust the digital clock that displays down here. Moving down we do, again this being early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s Toyota, and, or really any vehicle for that matter. It does feature a standard cigarette lighter, whereas now that's a paid option to get a smoker package. Plus a completely removable ashtray which apparently had stuff in it. Should have checked that. And then on the uh, over here we do have a, a set of deployable cup holders. Very nice. Moving over to our glove box. Very large glove box. It's got all our information, all the uh, documentation and sunglasses and some other stuff in there. So it's jam packed, but it still holds it all great. Moving up, we do have sun visors. Integrated vanity mirrors. These ones are not illuminated, unlike a lot of most, unlike most modern vehicles. We do have a set of dome lights. Does have three three setting garage home light. We have yet we never programmed it in this vehicle, but it exists. This display screen here will display the outside temperature, the direction you're facing, or you can adjust the modes and look at like distance to empty. Uh, average fuel economy, etc, etc. That's all displayed up here, which is kind of interesting. We've got two different controls here. The tilt control up and down, and the slide forward backward controls for our sunroof here. Which is like, which I'm guessing is one of the few options that this one has. Except I think leather might have been an option, because I think cloth was standard in the SR5s. And uh, one other thing, the door panel, the carpeted bit, can, is actually leather with a cool little ribbed pattern if you go for the limited of this version. Sequoia. Very nice. We'll demonstrate that in a bit. Like I said, we never really program the home link, so we just have a standard garage door opener. And we store it up in this little sunglass holder up here. Velcro it in and it just stays there. The sun visors do also have little extendo plastic bits, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Moving down, we do have a few things to mention here. One, our power mirror controls are located in the center console, which is kind of interesting. Whether it be left, right, and you can adjust four different directions here. They are not power folding, however. Moving over, we do have these two blanks. These are for the front two heated seats, available in the Limited. This one does not have that. Pair of cup holders, again, there's a lot of crap in here, I know. And then, actually, in this little storage tray, if this one was so equipped, there'd be a manual four-wheel drive lever right here. Either way, moving in, we do have our nice center console. It's kind of an interesting two-lid center console design here, where the front lid, the top lid opens backwards. Features freaking coin holder because again early 2000s. That's kind of what people had before debit cards really took off People actually carried loose change with them in their cars Small little area, but decent nonetheless pack of gum a couple of other things in here it Does have a clip so you can hold some notes, which is kind of cool And then it's a standard hinge for the main center console area, very deep. Again, there's a lot of stuff in here. Phone chargers, dusters, CDs, socks, notebooks, trash, emergency flashlight. It's a fairly deep center console. Now, ours does not close complete all the way in and doesn't latch immediately. Most do, but ours just broke. You just have to set it down and we just have to re-manually latch it, but whatever. Same goes with like this. Seatbelt works perfectly fine, but this is the normal rest for now, rather than that. It it works fine, 
it's again just 16 years of use and wear so yeah let's move on to the back seats a couple of things i forgot to mention before we get to the back seats here you do have a pair of tweeters up on the tops of the door panel kind of this corner bit here kind of another additional portion of the audio system and also the fuel door release is located down here just pull it and it pops your fuel door open. Ta-da! Moving to the back seats. Same basic design for our back or rear door panels. Again, these ones don't want to stay open. I'm on a slight incline and the hinges are old, but still, I mean your VIN's printed here, child locks. But other than that, the materials are all the same. Same kind of basic handles. This one's been the most annoying one. It's broken a couple of times. Um, power window switch. Removable ashtrays in the set, in the rear doors as well. Audio speaker. More of that carpeting. And a nice door pocket. Same basic idea. Again, grab handles on the B-pillars. Climbing on in. Gonna shut that anyway, because it was just gonna shut itself. Moving up, our rear air control, our rear air vents are located up top here next to another set of grab handles with integrated coat hooks. The front seat belts are height adjustable. They have an upper and a lower setting. Even more adjustment there. Nice storage bin kind of pouches behind the front seats. Pair of cup holders. And then we move to our rear climate control setup here. Here we have auto, off, the different zones, low, medium, which is just a circle for some reason, high, and then this adjusts your temperature here, up and down. Temperature displayed here runs between 65 and 85, I believe. I think so. You can see here's the factory floor mat. Here's our aftermarket floor mat. I don't know why we have one of each in here, but we do. <laughs> and as you would expect with... A center bench. It does fold down to a, to a nice armrest. However, this one doesn't feature cup holders it's because there are cup holders up front. But then again, this is America and people want freaking cup holders. But then again, I guess they didn't in 2002. Anyway, got this little removable cap here for a tie down latch for a car seat anchor point there. We haven't, we don't use those. <laughs> Does feature some Isofix anchor points here under these little Velcro flaps as well. Again, dome light here with our toggle on, off, and door. And then to toggle the out outboard ones. Again, fully adjustable headrests. Now, the seats do fold. It is a 60-40 split with the larger portion being on the driver's side and then the smaller portion being on the passenger side. To tumble, just top, pull this lever and it will fold flat like this. And then to fully tumble the seat, at least on the 60% side, is just to pull, you have to pull a separate lever as well. And there you go. Very nice. Like I said, fuel door. <laughs> Moving into the cargo area. Again, we've got nice tie down hooks. Uh, you got your jacks and emergency supplies. Our lug wrench is just kind of sitting out. Uh, this is some ventilation here, more tie down hooks. Cargo cover mounts, some more hooks and you do get a 12 volt power socket back here. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> That's pretty dang advanced for 2002. Good, good going, Toyota. Uh, your third seat belt for your third row is here. As for the third row, I'm actually going to go into this, into here, and just kind of show you because I don't want to bother to tumble the seats again. It's a 50 50 split rear bench. Does fit three people. Again, your third center seat belt is mounted in the ceiling, comes down, connects into here and into here to 
create a three point belt and then to release it completely when you need to fold the seats or you just want to film a video, you insert the key and push the button. Now back here you do have four cup holders, which is crazy. Store and decent sized storage wells on the sides is here, as well as some with lids. So a lot of storage little nooks in the third row. Again, also rear air vents and grab handles with coat hooks as well. Now, your seat pillars are fairly thick, and yes, the second row seat belts do adjust as well. At least the outboard too. So you, th you have very s thick seat pillars, which kind of limits rear visibility for the third row but then again i've sat in the third row of this thing for a while and on long road trips and it didn't really bother me that much but then again i was a kid at the time and i don't know now normally mounted here would be a little loop to help you pull down your uh lift gate because this is not the power lift gate and i don't even know if they offer the power lift gate on the limited model but, it being a 16 year old car, it, it, the screw wore out and it fell off. But here it is. Just imagine it usually being mounted here with a little plastic cover over top of it so you don't see all this metal. Or something. Either way, we still have it. We just haven't got it remounted yet. We don't really need to, because we all can just close the lift gate by ourselves without it. Moving to our exterior tour now, of, this, of the O2 Sequoia. Kind of a generic, basic design, because we didn't go all super flamboyant with car designs like we do now, i.e. Lexus and their giant grills. <laughs> Or even Toyota, for that matter, nowadays are still implementing giant grills and more aggressive design languages to their vehicles as well. So it's kind of a more conservative, tame approach when it comes to the automotive design here. But, but then again, it was 16 years ago, so what do you expect? Uh, we do have our turn signal indicators located here with some reflectors built in. Kind of an interesting design there. And again, this was changed with the 05 facelift. The whole front end got reworked. Got our main projector bulbs here as well as our high beams integrated. Yes, they are hazed housings. Again, it's an old truck. I know I, we need to clean these. I can figure that out. I'll do them later, but I didn't have the time to do so. Coming to the front grill, kind of horizontal, thick horizontal slats here. No sensors behind the badge because, again, this is a 16 year old truck, so. It's got no real need for that. None of that technology existed. So it's just a logo, but it is hollow. So it does allow more airflow through, which is kind of cool. And then we've got our V8 badge located in the, in the grill as well, just to really bring home that point that you bought the big engine. But then again, I think that was the only engine. Did they offer the V6 and O2? I really don't know. I'll have to put that up if I do figure that out. I know they offered the V6 in later models, but I didn't know if they offered it in the, this old. Anyway, moving down, we do. this one does feature fog lamps. Very nice. These are sealed beam fog lamps. Wow. Kind of an open lower grill here. Nice bumper. Kind of a really not much in the way of lower splitters or anything. I'm trying to hide the... And I'm not doing a good job of hiding the plate, but then again, you've seen mine anyway. It's kind of an interesting design the way they did this. It's a two-tone kind of color combo with most of the body panels being your main primary exterior color. And then you get this kind of secondary accent strip color that kind of runs in the front bumpers, wheel arches, side skirts, and rear bumpers all the way around. Most vehicles, it would be this silver. However, I know if you were to buy white, you can, you can get it as like a beige gold color. It looked really weird. You could get the same gold color with like the red exterior option as well. And then obviously like you'd expect back in 02, you can get all your badging instead of in like a brushed chrome finish, you can get it as a kind of like a chrome gold finish. And I've always hated, no offense to anyone who drives a vehicle like this, but I've always hated cars that, are, that have a dark red exterior 
with chrome gold badging and just never looked good to me. Chrome gold badging in general never really looked good to me. Anyway, moving down, we do have, you can see the panel gap here, but you've got, again, the, the silver wheel arches here. Moving down, it's kind of an interesting, almost five-spoke turbine-style turbine wheel design here, which is kind of interesting, with this kind of, with this kind of six-pointed star pattern thing around this Toyota logo to kind of give a little bit more design there in our center cap. Exposed lug nuts because, again, back in 02, people weren't as concerned with hiding the lug nuts and stylish wheel designs. Uh, this does feature front brake discs. Very nice, which is quite nice, actually. This was riding Michelin Defender LTX tires. These measure 24570R16s. So it's a big wheel, but a, it's a big tire, small wheel. As you can clearly tell. But then again, larger wheels were available on the Limited as well. So it does feature front mud flaps. Kind of an interesting body mold design along here is kind of just an additional strip for a little bit more design contour because there really aren't any aren't too many major crease lines. There's one that kind of runs here through the center and then there's kind of this one that kinks up toward the back of the vehicle but really not too much in the way of creases and, des and lines and stuff. Body color mirror shelves which is Kind of interesting. Not fully body color, but there is a body color portion to it, which is kind of interesting. No integrated turn signals. Again, these are manual fold, but are power adjustable from the inside of the vehicle as well. Very nice, kind of obvious, big running boards. Kind of a ribbed pattern here. The silver continues along the bottom as well. Don't even... The SR5 doesn't even give you chrome around your windows. It gives you rubber. There's a rubber seal around all of your windows. And that's and then plastic. You don't because again O2. And they didn't even bother to surround the back window. Oh, okay. Now, kind of an interesting fact here: these exterior door handles. Toyota only ever used this door handle design on three models that I ever that I actually know about: the Sequoia, its Toyota Tundra pickup counterpart, and the Mark IV Toyota Supra. Because why not? Eh, actually, now that I think about it, I think the Land Cruiser might have used these as well. The first gen Land Cruisers in the States might have, first or second gen Land Cruisers might have used these as well. Or at least a Land Cruiser at the time, which means that the Lexus LX at the time would have used them as well. Ah. Either way, not too common, but common enough amongst Toyotas. Got our SR5 badge on our very thick angular C pillar here. Again, the Wheel arches come across and the silver continues across as well. Just feature disc brakes in the rear as well, but then again, you kind of need discs rather than drums when you're trying to stop a vehicle of this size. Again, rear mud flaps behind the, the wheels here. Comes into kind of this kind of exposed kind of part that sticks out here of the rear bumper, which is kind of an interesting design. And again, an, another element that got changed with the 05 facelift was this was that of the tail lamp assembly here. So it's kind of a three-module design in the early models, with the top module being your brake light, center one being reverse, and the bottom one being your turn signal. And they even offered an amber turn signal in the original models. And they're kind of these three little bubbles, which is kind of weird. Whereas with a facelift, they have round brake light, round reverse light, and then no, nothing else. But it still kind of kept that same shape and they moved to a red tur rear turn signal, which is kind of weird. Again, not much going on in the back. It's very vertical. You do have a kind of, kind of an interesting little bulge here around the plate and around the release. Um, split tail lamp design, which is kind of interesting. We do have uh, more of that plastic rubber seal, which this is actually very dry and cracked if you can't see that there. So this is, again, this car grew up in Arizona and then we moved out to Wisconsin. So it's dealt with a lot of sun. So the rubber is worn very much, it's aged. Third brake light mounted up here, visible screws because no one cared, no two. 
This here, again, because no one cared in 02 and you didn't have to worry about hiding it, is your rear windshield washer jet. Just sticking out of the top of the, the vehicle, right there. Just, hey, how you doing? Got ourselves a rear windshield wiper. For some reason, they're normally supposed to be sitting on this mount here with the wiper blade sitting here, but ours sits behind it for some reason. I don't know how and why. Again, the wiper still works, it just doesn't want to cooperate and sit where it's supposed to. <laughs> Standard, just traditional Toyota badge, nothing fancy here. Again, this is back in the era when the manufacturer still wrote out what the manufacturer was alongside with the uh, stylized logo, whereas now modern vehicles are just the logo and they expect you to know what brand it is. <laughs> anyway, moving down, we have our Toyota and Sequoia badge. Interestingly enough, the word Sequoia uses all five U all five English vowels, all in one word, E-U-O-I-N-A, which is quite interesting. <laughs> the dealer sticker back here, again, you can see the Toyota Oldsmobile dealer in Mesa, Arizona that we bought this thing from in, in 02, so you can tell that, yeah, we never bothered to take that sticker off, it's just kind of been there. Got our iForce V8 badging back in the back here on the other side. Got keyhole which act, which will lock and unlock the rear tail tailgate. As you can see, you can lower the rear windshield window with the key fob. But you can only lower it with a key fob. You cannot raise it with a key fob, which is really annoying. Other than that, do have roof rails, cross beams, very nice as well. Under the hood of this example of the O2 Sequoia, I'm actually mistaken, this is a 4.7, not a 5.7 V8, but either way, it's still a big iForce V8 engine under here. Fully exposed, completely filthy, like, a, like you would expect from a 16-year-old vehicle. The manufacturer didn't bother to cover up the engine bay. <laughs> None of this fancy plastic engine covers or anything, just here's an engine, here you go. I mean, even in this vehicle, the grill comes up, so the whole front radiator is completely, and the cooling fans and some of the other equipment's completely exposed in the front here as well, so. Either way, fluid cap here, batteries, washer fluid, all of it's available here. The hood latch is actually kind of here, it's, it's a very weird design. Either way. Well, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at my family's own 2002 Toyota Sequoia SR5. Till the next one, take care.